Taxonomic names have previously taken inspiration from all manner of sources. People's names, local folklore, adjectives and places, amongst others. Every organism that has ever been discovered has, or eventually will have one. From the tiniest ostracod to the most colossal whale, and everything in between. Dinosaur names in particular have been known to strike awe and inspiration into those who hear them, with some names sounding unintentionally dynamic simply because they belonged to some of the largest predators that ever lived. Some names though, for better or for worse, have taken inspiration from a much more modern source, popular culture. In 2020, an abelosaurid was described from the Lake Cretaceous of Brazil, whose genus, interestingly, was named Thanos. Not the ancient Greek mythological personification of death, but rather the Marvel comic supervillain portrayed by Josh Brolin in the 2018 and 2019 films Infinity War and Endgame. Today we will be meeting this dinosaur from both the biological and nomenclatural perspective, discussing how and where it lived, how it was discovered, and the reasons behind choosing its name. Sit back and relax as we take you back to the Lake Cretaceous to meet Thanos, the dinosaur named after a Marvel supervillain. Unfortunately for the dinosaurs, they hadn't quite developed a way of writing down their history and achievements. After the extinction event, we have to rely on the incredible work of paleontologists to let us know everything about the lives of these magnificent creatures. If we were to suffer the same fate with a mass extinction event, what could future life on Earth use to learn about the people and inventions of our world? Well, with today's sponsor, the book The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding a Civilization, a condensed history of human knowledge and inventions now exists. This book is an incredibly bountiful book, featuring over 400 pages of the most amazing inventions of humankind. With over 180 topics divided into 23 chapters, every page of this book features awe-inspiring handmade illustrations, including unique engineers' drawings and medieval art. It uses clever engineering with high-quality matte art paper, and just look at this stunning laminated cover and special bindings. The book is a captivating illustrated encyclopedia and offers a fascinating journey through the most significant human inventions, appealing to both adults and children. It's not just a book, it's a fun and engaging way to explore history, making it perfect for your personal library, or as a thoughtful gift for collectors, friends, parents, colleagues, and anyone with a curious mind eager to delve into the wonders of human innovation. Don't just take my word for it. The project collected more than $3.2 million in investments on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, as well as achieving bestseller status in Germany and Italy, while also being an official bestseller on Amazon US. Over 50 professionals were involved in creating the book, ranging from artists to scientists, architects to designers, and more. This isn't just an ordinary history or scientific book. It's a totally unique concept and unlike any book I've owned before. So if you want to be time travel ready or simply want to impress with your Christmas gifting skills, make sure you grab the book using the link in the description below. Thanos Simonatoi was a Brachiostrin abelosaurid dinosaur a member of a group of theropods that were successful across the supercontinent of Gondwana throughout the late Cretaceous. It lived in what is today Brazil during the Santonian stage of the Cretaceous, between 86 and 83 million years ago. For an abelosaurid in relatively close relation to the likes of Carnotaurus and Rajasaurus, Thanos was, despite its namesake, rather small. The dinosaur was estimated to have measured anywhere between 5.5 to 6.5 meters tall when fully grown, and a meter and a half tall, just shorter than the average adult human. Thanos is only known from very sparse remains, but the remains we do have tell us a great deal about what this dinosaur may have looked like in life. A major characteristic of abelosaurs was the recognizable short snout, 
much shorter than those of other late Cretaceous carnivores such as the Tyrannosaurs, and Thanos was believed to have been no different. It was also thought to have had the typically short forelimbs of other abelosaurs, to the point where they looked almost disproportionately comical. The dinosaur held itself horizontally as it walked on comparatively long, thin legs, with its long tail held outstretched behind it. Sharp, dagger-like teeth were situated within the short jaws, and would have acted as the animal's main weapons when tackling prey, likely small to medium-sized herbivores. It may come as a surprise that this medium-sized theropod is the dinosaur that was chosen to bear the name of one of the most canonically powerful characters in popular culture history. But as we will see later in the video, the world of taxonomic nomenclature is a strange and unconventional place. In 2014, word began to spread in the paleontology community that the remains of a medium-sized theropod, specifically a partial axis bone, the second vertebrae in the spine, were discovered by paleontologist Sergio Luis Simonato and his team. They were commissioned by the Musea de Paleontologia in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the bone was reportedly discovered near the municipality of São José do Rio Preto in the state's northwest region. The bone was extracted from the rocks and was sent back to the museum for further study, where it would remain for several years until more remains could be found. That second discovery came when Fabiano Vidoi Iori found the missing part of the exact same bone in the same rocks that Simonato and his team were excavating in a few years prior. Iori's find was brought back to the museum to be reunited with its counterpart, and the dinosaur was re-examined. The results of the study concluded that this was indeed a new genus of Abelosaurid, and the name was issued in 2018, before its publication in the journal Historical Biology in 2020. The name Thanos was given as a reference to the Marvel character of the same name a supervillain known for his extreme strength, invulnerability, and possession of the Infinity Stones, which provide him with godlike abilities. The specific name was chosen to honor Sergio Luis Simonato, who discovered the first half of the Axis Bone in 2014. The genus name was met with controversy in the paleontological community, with some seeing the name as unimaginative or shallow to name an ancient organism after a comic book character. More controversy could be found over the fact that the dinosaur was named and described on the basis of one single bone, when some dinosaurs don't get described even after much more complete specimens are found. Naming dinosaurs on the basis of one bone is risky because it could easily become an invalid taxon if any evidence is discovered to discredit it. The fact that the name was to many overly dramatic added insult to injury. To date, no further fossil content belonging to Thanos Simonatoi has been uncovered from the rocks of the São José do Rio Petro formation. Perhaps in time this will change and we can reveal more about this long-lost animal. Thanos lived in the São José do Rio Preto formation, a member of the Bauru geological group in the Paraná basin of southern inland Brazil. The formation sits alongside the likes of the Adamanchina, Marília, Serra de Galga, and Uberaba formations, which together are known to harbor a great deal of fossil content, plenty of which includes dinosaur remains. It is thought to have lived in an arid environment, with sparse vegetation coverage and little water. Thanos lived alongside a species of dwarf sauropod, Ibirania parva, which was one of the smallest sauropods described to date. Elsewhere, its cousins were sprouting into the largest land animals the world has ever seen. But this miniature saltosaurine measured a little under 6 meters in length. The lack of vegetation available in its environment is thought to have contributed to its smaller size, limiting its growth to much smaller than the average sauropod. It is possible that Ibirania was a key food source for Thanos as a result of its size. 
Due to the limited fossil content uncovered from each dinosaur, however, it is impossible to discern how true this may be at this time. What we do know is that Thanos almost certainly was not the apex predator of its environment, as remains of a large, unnamed Megaraptor have been discovered in the region. It is highly possible that this Megaraptorin would have been capable of taking down Thanos given the chance, given its larger size. Alongside these dinosaurs, and common in the wider Bowder group, were Notosuchian crocodilomorphs. An unnamed one has been unearthed from the São José do Rio Preto formation, showing an animal that would have resembled a long-legged crocodilian in life. These reptiles would survive long after the dinosaurs became extinct, and would even find themselves as some of the largest and most powerful apex predators throughout the early to mid-Cenozoic epoch. Most individuals from the Baudu group, however, were much more modest in size. While the name Thanos might seem like a bizarre choice, you might be surprised to hear about some of the scientific names given to other animals, both extinct and extant. As we mentioned towards the beginning of this video, taxonomic names can take inspiration from a variety of sources, and in the modern day, popular culture is occasionally one of those. This is not strictly a new theme, and Linnaeus himself, the father of binomial nomenclature or the naming of organisms, was taking inspiration from works of fiction long before the Marvel Cinematic Universe was introduced. In 1758, he named two animals after works of Greek mythology, specifically the Saurus crane, Antigone Antigone, and the cotton-topped tamarin, Saguinus Oedipus. While the latter name was given with little reasoning, the crane was named for Antigone of Troy, who was told to have metamorphosed into a similar bird. Several animals have been named after the works of famed playwright William Shakespeare, including the genus name of Australasian robins, Paneothello, and the fly genus Sycorax. Other works of classic literature to have lent their names to living things are Robinson Crusoe, Gulliver's Travels, Moby Dick, The Three Musketeers, Don Quixote, Alice in Wonderland, and Sherlock Holmes, amongst many others. Around the turn of the 1980s and 1990s, organisms would begin to take inspiration from popular films. Disney classics such as Winnie the Pooh, Pinocchio, and Peter Pan would be amongst the first, but as time progressed, more and more animals would take their names from Hollywood blockbusters and popular television shows. In 2023, two species of sandworm were named after the Shai Halud, giant alien worms featured in Dune and its film adaptations. 2014 would see a variety of wasps in the genus Lilius, named for the fictional houses in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire and its television adaptation Game of Thrones. Elsewhere in the Tree of Life lie animals named after Harry Potter, The Godfather, Avatar, King Kong, and My Neighbor Totoro. There is even a species of mite named after Shrek. Whether you like it or not, taxonomic names that take inspiration from popular culture have been around for decades, and they are more than likely here to stay for good. Thanos is just one more drop in a much larger ocean of literally hundreds of organisms that bear the names of characters, titles, artists, and more. So what do you think of the idea of prehistoric and living animals being given names that relate to elements of popular culture? Is it a good idea to honor the works of fiction and art? Or should names be more descriptive, allowing us to identify the organism in question? It is a debate that has been carried out passively and quietly in the zoological community with Thanos coming to light in recent years as one of the most controversial and high profile. Whether or not Thanos ends up staying a legitimate taxon going forward, we can only hope that we learn more about this animal in order to get a better understanding of how it lived and evolved.